Hello, uh, my name is Ramit De Silva. I'm a lead solutions engineer at WSO2. Uh, this session is about uh, simple integrations that can be done using the micro integrator. Um, so before we move forward, uh, let's start with downloading the micro integrator and then uh, steps to set it up. So first you need to go to the, just Google it for WSO2 Integration Studio. And once you go to the micro integrator site, you could click on download and then you could provide your corporate email address, uh, set the software license and then uh, download the integration studio and there will be a one-time download link to email to your uh, email account specified over here once you install the wso2 integration studio uh, you can open it and then uh, you could uh, provide a workspace uh, in your local environment and then you can launch the integration studio then after the integration studio is started up, uh, but you can start it off with uh, creating a new integration project. So over here also you can create an integration project. Also you can right click and create an integration project as well. So you can give it a uh, name for the integration project. And then you could just click next. Say test and then finish and then you could see the integration project has been created now let's start on developing basic integrations using the ws2 integration studio so let's uh, try out an api in occasion uh, for into the ws2 micro integrator and then do some message transformation and mediation and how to all do all those integrations uh, by drag and dropping all those components and also configure them those so let's create a api over here you can give a name and a context so this would be the context when calling the API, which is deployed in the micro integrator. And then once you finish, you will be given an API also with a resource in a uh, root level resource. Then we could drag and drop some of those components in order to call some HTTP endpoints. So let's create an HTTP endpoint and configure it. So you could have several HTTP methods. So let's give an sample point over here. So let me make it text as a guest. You could have some different advanced or configurations as well then let's save it as once we save it you can go to the source view with this and then you can see that our configuration is also available in the source view as well and then like since we have only one resource you could just drop another resource as well and then provide an maybe if you need some parts in the api you can have a uri template uri template and then also give some test path over here and you could mention what, what is the method as well so once you save it and then when you go back to the source view you can see this 
other resource that you added as well. Now let's see on how to import and connector and then use that connector within your integration studio. So these connectors are uh, available on the WC2 connector store and it is also can be accessed using the uh, integration studio. So uh, first what you have to do is we need to create a connector exporter over here. And then let's click on next. This would be test, and then we could finish. So after that, what you have to do is you need to right click on this test configs and then add or remove modules. Then when you click on next, you get the full list of connectors that is available in the WC2 extension. So let's say as an example, um, you need to download this lambda connector. So once you click on it, it will be downloaded, and then you could click on next, and then you could provide the connector exporter that you have created previously, so that it will be available in that particular. Connect exporter as well. Yeah. Then you will be able to get this Amazon Lambda connector over here. And then when you need to do any configurations or changes, what you have to do is you just can drag and drop over here and then whatever the parameters you can configure. So that is the same for all the connectors when you need to install it in the WSO2 integrator studio. Also, when getting the connector into the workspace uh, or the uh, connector exporter, you could straight away go to the website and then search for the, your connector and then download. After that, you could add or remove that connector using the file system with the Amazon Lambda or else you could use the workspace in order to select it and import as well. So after that when your integration project is completed you could export the composite application project to your preferred location in the WZ2 integrator repository deployment server carbon apps and then you need to select your projects so since I have two projects there are other project folders sub projects all these are getting listed so need to create the correct ones and then finish then the archive file will be successfully created in the given destination as well. Once you have done with the integrations, without sending it to the micro integrator instance uh, that is running locally or in an another VM machine, you could test this solution in the embedded micro integrator instance in the studio itself. So, if you need to configure the integration studio, the embedded integration studio you could use this uh, deployment thermal and also if there are any files that needs to be added any jar files you could add it from your file systems into this and then select save and then you could run the embedded micro integrator server over here then you need to select the connect exporter and then the test configs and then click on finish and then the micro integrator will be starting in the integration studio itself and you could see 
the test API is being deployed and also you could see the URLs that we have defined as well over here. Okay, now we know how to start with an integration project and then uh, test it in the embedded micro integrator and create the compressed carbon application file and also deployed in the micro integrator. Okay, now let's move on to the uh, several use cases that I'm trying to uh, demo uh, right after that. So, first use case is uh, the data transformation use case. So, ideally, you get a JSON payload from the uh, source, and then with, you, with the use of the payload factory, I will be creating a XML payload and send the response back to the client. So, currently, for the uh, ease of demoing, I have created all those integration beforehand, and I will explain it all those integration when going forward so let's move into the first use case so this is my project that all the integrations that are available currently in my project configs i have the payload transformation api And over here I have this particular resource that is available in the API which is calling as JSON to XML and I have used the freemaker template in order to convert the JSON to the XML so from this template what it does is whenever the request comes in it will get the path number and the source system so if we are moving into the the Postman, which is a third party tool that I will be using in order to demonstrate these requests and responses. So it contains this particular payload. There are several values that is in the root of the JSON, and there are array of JSON objects within that. So ideally, from my integration, what I will do is I will extract these two sections and also the address section with the address number and the uh, address one so with using this syntax it will iterate through the addresses because addresses is a json array and then convert all those into xml and send out to the send the response out to the client so Let's try to expose this. Okay, all those correct files are selected. Then let's export to the section. So let's start the micro integrator. Okay, the micro integrator is started. And now let's send this payload to the api deployed in the micro integrator as you could see this payload is generated so let's change some numbers let's say 001 sample just number 25 this is 24 is okay this is number this is go and once you send it it will reflect all those values so since i have added over here it is not reflected so if i add this over here ones also getting reflected as well so that's uh, my first use case 
and then also if you if I could give you a quick glance of the embedded micro integrator you could deploy the same in the micro integrator okay the micro integrator is starting it is deployed okay now once I add this let's change some values so that we can make it sure so it goes to the micro integrator which is embedded in the integration studio itself and then gives you the response okay now let's move on to the next scenario it is the uh, file integration use case so ideally there are several file integration use cases that I'm trying to demo, demo it to you so one is I'll be calling an API and then from that API call within that API it will read the file which is in the local file system and then using a CSV connector I'll be Gen converting that CSV payload into XML and then also using a file writer, I'll be writing into a target XML as well. So let's demo that part first. So, ideally, so it is the CSV to XML part. So I will just be invoking this. API and then I will have a source CSV file which I'm reading using this file connection. The file connection is again a, a, an XML file which we have given the, uh, the working directory of the file connection. So in the transformation uh, happens, it will go to this file directory and use this path and then read the message and then convert the message from csv to xml so in here uh, we are mentioning the header is present because it's a csv file and we have a header over there and then uh, we have the tag names over here and then after that we are writing this all those events or the payload into the target xml file Now this is the location of the file and when looking at the file content when uh, you can go to this content so start txt and you can see there is a header and the data value let's close this file and also tail the target xml file okay now let's execute this api request once it is executed you can see a new xml value is generated on the file that is given at the target now let's move to our next uh, scenario when it comes to the file integration so in next this scenario we will be sending a json payload through the api request itself we are not using a file reader to read that uh, payload and then using the csv to json uh, from the csv connector we convert that particular json into a csv into a uh, another file called target csv so uh, so this is the part the, this is the resource that would do that particular integration so with the payload we will be adding a custom header which will be the index name email and the number and then using the file connection we will be writing it to the target csv so over here we'll go to the tail the target source uh, it will be the target csv in this case okay and then now let's go to the frame postman so let's go to this json so i have like several uh, arrays 
uh, JSON objects in the array and now let's execute this okay the result came back to the JSON uh, okay. postman and also you could see with the tailing file it got written the new content as well and now the next scenario is using this file inbound endpoint whenever a file is available as a source.csv it will read that file and then log it in the console so over here i have just added the log over here but in a real world use case this could be some other target endpoint such as maybe the http endpoint could be a kafka message broker or a, another uh, system that is integrated with the micro integrator okay now this is i'm using something else called the inbound endpoints so over here i have the file inbound endpoint and this will be listening to this particular location or the directory in case of a file that is created with this particular name pattern source2.csv uh, this file which is you can see the content over here and then once we move this file to the source.2.csv you could see a log over here with the content that is available so as you could just see this content is now printed in the log so this full payload if you have added another connector you could set it through across the micro integrator to the desired target endpoint and that's about the file integration scenarios that i want to demonstrate to you okay now let's move to the next use case which is the service chaining use case so for this particular scenario i have taken an help from uh, ballerina the integration language which is developed from scratch from by wso2 and so using that uh, ballerina i have written some services so let me quickly give you a quick glance on that so over here uh, i have i have a service that is up and running on local host uh, local host port 1991 and there are several uh, apis exposed as an service uh, service and also it is integrated with the uh, db as well and I, my db has several uh, data uh, within those tables so currently with uh, the, this scenario uh, what i'm trying to do is uh, i will be having two uh, services that is up and running one will give this particular response for the first call and then this particular response for the second call and with the integration i will combine these two uh, payloads into one by eliminating some of those available keys and values and send the payload to the client the response payload to the client so over here if you go to the postman client you could see uh, this is the uh, back end the ballerina service so it returns this particular full payload and when it comes to the department and i give the department name and sending it gives this department information so now let's go to the uh, service chain in sequence so here over here i would like to mention like here we have the ability to reuse whatever the sequences that are written uh, in the sequences folder in your integration so as an example i have used this integration or the sequence within my uh, API so if you need to have another API with the same service chaining sequence 
you can just add the sequence key you don't need to rewrite it again uh, from scratch you can reuse it okay so when it comes to this sequence uh, chain is sequence so what i have done is so let's get to the source code so uh, i'll be uh, getting this uh, item id from the query param and then replace it to the uh, http call get method and then after i receive the payload i will save it as properties in the message context and then i will be sending out another call with the department name that i got from the previous payload so this is uh, the department name value so after that i will be getting those uh, second response and then since now i have these through these three uh, values and then after that with the second request payload since i have this name and location values i'll be generating this payload with the payload factory and sending out the response back to the client so now let's go to the uh, my postman okay so over here this is my uh, request uh, i don't need this this is to get so i have i i'm only sending this item id as 7 so this will be extracted as a query param and then use it to call the backend services and then the an, another second call will be executed and we will be getting this particular payload as i mentioned before so these three payload from these three values from the first uh, response from the first uh, first request to the backend service and these are from the next request from the uh, for the backend service so uh, that is how a service chaining uh, scenario can be done using the WSO2 micro integrator. Okay, then uh, the next use case is about the schema validation and error handling. So I'll start with from the error handling part. So in here, what I'll be doing is so there will be a request sent to the backend. Also, this also be is hosted on Ballerina, and then uh, with um, a wrong seller ID to the backend, it will send a HTTP 500 request on JSON payload. The message body will be JSON payload. And what we will do is we'll check the status, HTTP status code, and then in case if it's a 500 may error, we will convert it to a XML and send it to the backend. So over here. This is the resource that has this error handling part. Okay, so with the payload, I'll be getting the seller ID from the JSON payload. So ideally, this is a post request. So I'm getting a evaluating the JSON uh, path and then getting the seller ID and then calling an endpoint which is hosted by Ballerina. And then if the uh, property of the HTTP status code is 500 then I'll be con converting the JSON to an XML and then sending back to the client but in case if it's not I'll be converting the JSON by filtering some of the values and sending back to the client again so let me demonstrate to you using the postman itself currently i will be doing an post request uh, to the uh, ballerina service with an invalid number and you could see 
and JSON value is returned. But now when we are doing this with micro integrator error handling with the same seller ID, what we get is an XML. So internally it will check for 500 stated cores and if it is it will return an XML. So in case we give a correct uh, ID, it will return the uh, the particular result in uh, the in XML format by also converting it from JSON to XML. Um, so after that. Uh, the next scenario on this particular use case is about validating and JSON payload uh, with respect to a given schema and then if the schema is matches it will send it to the Kafka broker and if not it will send an error message back to the client. So currently uh, this is the uh, component or the integration that I have been written. So, uh, I have this schema available, the JSON validator uh, in the registry resources. So, as you could see over here, the JSON validator object is, uh, is here. So, it has been defined all the uh, attributes and its types and all sorts of properties. And on fail of the validation, it will provide an error message and then respond back to the client. But if not, it will go towards the this for each and then uh, because these orders are in an array, it will iterate through that array and generate event by event to the uh, in the micro integrate itself. And using the Kafka transport available, it will publish all those events to the Kafka broker. So currently, uh, I have a Kafka consumer client that is available in the their the distribution Kafka distribution itself. Uh, listening to the uh, particular topic, and then using this schema so this is the one that uh, that is hosted in the micro integrator these are the orders so these are the array of orders that i mentioned to you before and once it's sent to 200 except the state so there are the two events that is received in the kafka side so in case let's say Let's change this to uh, something else. Orders one. So now the schema validation is done its job, and then has given a validating message error saying uh, the object is having missing required properties. Orders. Right. Okay. Since we are done with the integrations studio and in micro integrator and since we know how the integrations can be developed and deployed and now it's about exposing those services as api so when it comes to wso2 micro integrator and api manager we have uh, seamless integration within each other and we have a service catalog feature which shows all those services that are exposed by the micro integrator so i have started the wso2 api manager server and now i'm in the publisher portal so you could see some of the apis that have been deployed and there's this service catalog view in the wso2 api manager so when micro integrator is started up and when there are services which are exposed as apis it will automatically 
upload those service definitions into the API manager. So before doing that, you could see there are this metadata of those particular API. There's the micro integrator host and port that we need to define in the API metadata section. So since we have exposed this without any security, we can remove the HTTPS part and then provide the local host and then the MI port which is 8290 which is the server port is running for the API request. So then let's save it and let's deploy this API or the full project in the micro integrator. Now, let's start the API manager. So once it's started, so these URLs will be available and now we'll start the micro integrator instance. So now since we have that project already within micro integrator, when the micro integrator is starting, those artifacts with regards to the API service will upload to the API manager. So now the micro integrator is starting. And you could see this particular log which mentioned it successfully updated the service catalog and from the API manager side also there will be some logs which mentioning that this API is now available in the service catalog. So once you refresh this now you could see the payload transformation API the service is available over here and with the click of a button you could create the API you could use the same default values that over here create the API and then all the resources are now automatically have been added to the API the API definition the endpoint and now what we have to do is just deploy it in the API gateway and then publish so that it will be available in the dev portal so you can see the dev portal uh, in the dev portal the payload transformation api is now available so in order to invoke this api we need to create an application and then need to generate its keys if needed you can generate an access token as well and copy the access token and then subscribe to the payload transformation api go to the apis with using the tryout component we could provide the copied author uh, token over here if needed you can get a test key as well and then now let's try it out let's delete this payload and then copy the payload from the postman client that we used to call the json to xml resource once we add it we could execute it and now you could see the same response i have now getting via the api manager gateway we have sent the the bearer token as well now 
it is HTTPS and it's secure as well and fronted by the WSO2 API manager gateway. So if we change change these addresses, let's say that's two and Chicago three and once we execute you get the changed value why moving from the WSO2 gateway to the other backends so the request comes to the API invocation comes to the API gateway and then it will forward to the micro integrator and that's how you secure your services which are in the micro integrator using the WSO2 API manager and also with because of the seamless integration it is very easy to expose the particular API without few information that you need to provide when creating the API out of the service those are the demo scenarios that I uh, created implemented in order to demo it to you uh, so thanks for watching and please get back to us if there's anything uh, that is needed by you.